if you're looking for the Facing Your Fears webinar sponsored by Indie Recon, you are in the right place. My name is Susan K. Quinn and I am the author of the Indie Author Survival Guide. I'm a speculative fiction author. I write for kids as well as adults and I've been indie publishing since 2011 and blogging about that journey the whole way along. The Indie Author Survival Guide actually came out of a compilation and updating of those blog posts. And when I published it last 2013, it was current for that time. Of course, things are always changing. But I hoped it would be a guide that would take a first-time author through that initial decision to decide to self-publish through to the publication of their first book. But it also has information in there that will be helpful to people who have already published in terms of marketing and um, moving forward with your career. But when I first started indie publishing, uh, I made a promise to myself that if I had some measure of success, that I wasn't going to go write one of those get rich quick books about how ebooks are a great way to cash in in the gold rush. Uh, instead, I was going to write a book about fear, owning it, facing it, overcoming it, from someone who had not had a creative life for a long time and then discovered that it could set me free. And the Indie Author Survival Guide, even though it is a pretty comprehensive guide, uh, a large chunk of it is actually devoted to facing your fears. And be so, I feel somewhat qualified to talk about this because I feel like I faced all the fears, all the possible permutations of fear that could go with this process. So, um, the, And I think it's getting past those fears is an important part of that first step toward publishing any kind of book, but especially with self-publishing. So today we're going to talk about things we fear, what those fears tell us, and how to be brave. And this isn't going to be a simple face your fears and overcome them uh, kind of talk um, because that ultimately isn't really helpful. I, I come from a science and engineering background. I like to understand things. And so when um, I'm talking about fear, I like to understand where those fears come from. And I think having real tools to get through them um, come out of a knowledge of what they're really about. So let's talk about things we fear. I'm going to rely a, quite a bit on Brene Brown's TED Talk, which really opened my eyes as to what fear was and how to constructively deal with it. And her talk focuses on vulnerability and how when we're vulnerable, that's when we experience fear. And let's talk a little bit specifically about what fear looks like and how we react to it. Fear is a real thing. It's not the boogeyman that we're afraid of. We're afraid of real things that stress us out. And uh, when we're afraid, uh, we often want to hide from those fears. We want to hide from the possibility of the things that we're afraid of, go into denial about it. And whether you're stressed or you know actively engaging in the fear or you're in denial about the fear, those things can be very negative and they can really drag you down even as you're trudging forward with it. So these are definitely negative things that we want to address. So let's take a closer look at what those fears look like. Um, a fear of sharing. I think one of the very first from the beginning things that you fear as a writer is sharing your work. Um, whether it's that first critique partner all the way up until you start to publish and you're sharing it with the world. And there's always the fear that it's going to be judged poorly. <laughs> um, that you'll have a fear of failure, meaning that you'll have poor reviews, that your books won't sell, that people will simply not like it. And um, those are very real fears, and those are things that can really happen. So it's not like we're afraid of something that's not a possibility. Um, fear of success is something that I've actually experienced myself, and I think a lot of people do, where... It seems sort of counterintuitive, but once you've had some success, um, there's an expectation that you will continue to have that success. And so failure following success 
is almost more painful. And um, I think there is a great fear that if you're too successful, that you won't be able to keep following up that act. And um, I think that's a fear that sometimes holds people back from risking that success in the first place. The fear of being an imposter. This is something that I personally experienced uh, quite a bit. I've experienced all of these um, that I'm naming, but um, as a person with a background in engineering, I have a PhD in engineering, and I was going to turn around and become a children's author, which is one of the first um, places that I started, even though I write for all ages now. Um, that was a very different turn. And uh, for a long time, I was convinced that people were going to figure out that I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And that that would expose me as some kind of charlatan. And Interestingly, there is a lot of research into this that shows that usually the people who are experiencing this kind of fear of being an imposter are people who are generally actually quite competent in their work. Um, there's a sense that they have of, if I can do it, um, anyone can do it, and therefore it's not that big of a deal. And people will figure out that I don't actually really have any special mojo going on, that I'm just sort of making this stuff up as I go. And um, so that can be a fear that sort of haunts you as you go along the way. Another fear that I found as we go through the writing and the publishing process, especially once you're published, um, I think we have all these fears of failure and success before they actually start to happen before you actually publish. But once you publish, there's a very real concern about being consumed by it. Um, there is so much work that goes into any publishing, or really any publishing, and I, I think it's, you know, there's this idea that somehow if you're with a traditional publisher, uh, you don't have to do as much work <laughs> on the publishing end of things, and I don't think that is at all true. Um, whether you're responding to edits from your editor, whether you're getting out and promoting the book, whether you're going on tour, no matter at what level you are, even on the traditional side, you are doing a ton of work. And um, I think it does have the risk of consuming you and having it be this sort of end-all be-all. And for me personally, this was a fear I had about, um, you know, pulling away from my what I consider my real job, which is being a mom. That's my primary thing. Um, but I, you know, have this job now as a writer, and it's not a small job. It's It takes a lot of time. And so I was afraid of not having the right life-work balance. And I think that's something that a lot of people deal with. Um, it's a very 21st century issue balancing life and work and making sure that one doesn't consume you, particularly work. And then there's the fear of the dark, which I, I think once you've published or once you sort of um, explore a little further down the road in your journey as a writer, um, you may tend toward things that are a little darker in content. Um, and then you start to fear the judgment that can come with that. People you're afraid of what people would think when they read your work, whether you're putting it out for the first time or perhaps it's your third or fourth book and it's a lot more dark than your previous works and you're concerned about what people will think. So these are all fears that I think are very reality-based. Um, we're not being afraid of the boogeyman here. We're afraid of things that, that have a real possibility of doing what Renee Brown talked about which is making ourselves vulnerable. And that vulnerability is essentially a fear of losing connection with other people. Whether we're sharing or we're failing or we're being consumed, um, we're afraid that if we do something, it's going to bring a certain amount of shame to us. If we take that risk, it's going to essentially make people think less of us because of our failures because of our uh, being found out that we're actually a hack writer um, because we get that bad review on Amazon um, we're afraid that people will think less of us we're afraid of losing that connection with people that are important to us and these are real things these are this is what gives 
fear its power is the idea that we would be losing those connections. So that's what we fear. So let's take a little bit of time to look at what that fears, those fears are telling us. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is from Anne Rice. And she says, go where the pain is, go where the pleasure is. And I love that quote because I think it's saying that essentially like pain, fear is a signal. All right. When you have a pain in your body or even emotional pain, um, there are some of those that you can safely ignore. You know that it's just an ache or pain from something that you did. And then sometimes it's something more serious and you need to pay attention to it and go to the ER. Fear is like that. It's um, Some of them you can safely ignore. Some of them are a deeper signal that are telling you something important. And you need to pay attention to what that is. Rather than just ignoring your fears or just pushing through them, you want to make sure that you're actually addressing what that fear is based on. And I think this is what Anne Rice's quote talks about, um, that as an artist, when we go where the pain is, we're going to the place where we have our greatest hope for progress as an artist. And I think that's a tremendously important concept because it doesn't apply just to your creative work, but also to your publishing and your marketing journeys as well. It's telling you, in essence, the idea is that there's something worth doing. If, if you're afraid of it, if you're taking this risk, if you're being vulnerable, you're putting out something that people are going to maybe review badly or you're afraid that they will judge you about it, the chances are that is something that is worth doing. And if it wasn't worth doing, you probably would not have the fears around it. Fear is a sign that you are being vulnerable. And this goes back to Brene Brown's idea about vulnerability. Fear is the signal that tells you you're about to do something that is going to make you vulnerable in the world. Now that vulnerability is a real thing. You could possibly, you know, be hurt by a bad review or be hurt by failure in the marketplace of not selling your book or being judged. These are real vulnerable vulnerabilities that we have. And so to just push through them and ignore them is not necessarily going to either get you there or really help you. So let's talk a little bit about now that we know what the fear is telling us, how to be brave. Another quote from Brené. Vulnerability is courage in you and weakness in me. So we have these fears of real things because we are vulnerable. But when we look at someone else and we see them being vulnerable, we see them taking a risk, we see them doing something that other people don't do, we see that as courage. When we see it in ourselves, however, we see it as weakness. We think, well, if I'm feeling afraid, if I'm feeling vulnerable, it's because I'm weak. When in fact, it is more accurate what we see in other people. It is you being courageous when you're being willing to take that risk and that step and, vul and be vulnerable is when you are actually already being courageous. And I think looking at it through that lens helps us to come up with some strategies of how to actually move through that. So let's dive into that a little deeper about how to be brave. All right. Fear is an anticipatory emotion. I, I think we understand that, but we don't always feel it. Fear is about something that hasn't happened yet. We're afraid that people will judge us. We're afraid that the reviews will be bad. But we don't, that hasn't happened yet. And the thing that I think is the biggest counter to that is to take some creative action in the face of that anticipatory fear. I put up this picture of the cork board and my notes and my research because this is actually a story that I'm working on right now called Singularity. It's about a future time when machines become uh, more intelligent than humans. And this picture was taken a year ago. I'm actually writing the book now, but a year ago I was starting to plan it and just diving into the possibility of writing this story, which was going to take multiple books and was a huge topic. And as I started to look at it, I realized it 
it wasn't just about machines or computers. It was about spirituality. It was about our bodies as um, our beings. And it had social and political ramifications. It was a huge topic. And I was tackling this and the fears were just bombarding me <laughs> because, uh, you know, somebody look at me and say, okay, you have a PhD in engineering, you should be able to figure this out. Well, having a PhD in engineering only allows me to understand how much I don't know and how much other people will know in this subject that I do not. And so I had a lot of fear about whether I should even be attempting to tackle this subject. At the same time, I was incredibly drawn to it and really inspired by it. So I knew it had worth. I knew the fear was telling me that there was something worthwhile there. And so what I did is I went to the library and I got that stack of books that you see in the picture and I started outlining. And once I dove into that creative action, um, the fear just dissipated and went away. And it was really a very object lesson for me in how to approach things like this things that were legitimate fears, and I think not something, a fear that I wanted to hold me back. I wanted to be brave in the face of this fear, and that was an action that I could take. And one of the things that really came out of that for me is how creative action is almost inherently better than, than action. I mean, any action itself will move you forward, and that's great. But, and just putting one step in front of another, fantastic, because that will also get you there. But creative action has a way of being life-giving. It's a creative act. And because it's such a positive thing, it tends to be the exact antidote to fear. And so I highly encourage doing stuff like that. Now, not all of your fears are going to be based on something that's, that's a creative act that you can directly tied to your books. Uh, for example, my mom-based fear of worrying about my kids and neglecting my kids as I get all immersed in this indie publishing thing. A real fear. Uh, it took me a long time to even admit it to myself, much less admit it here on a webinar. Um, but once I did, um, I admitted it, I named it, I wrote it down, and I had to take action in the face of that. Now identifying what kind of action to take for a fear that's a little more nebulous um, was a little more difficult, but in writing about it, I, I really nailed down in particular what it was I was afraid was going to happen. I was afraid that I would miss out on a particular instance of my children's lives, or I would not perhaps develop their creativity or do some other aspect of parenting that was tremendously important to me. Um, and I didn't want that to happen. And so by writing about it, I helped focus myself on actions that I could take. And I did, and I specifically took actions where I would, for example, spend more time with my middle son, taking him off to, he likes to go to Starbucks, yay! <laughs> so we would go to Starbucks together and have our little heart-to-heart -heart talks. Um, and it, so that was a specific action I could take and surprisingly it worked extremely well to calm my fears and it also of course paid great benefits in my relationship with my kid. So um, I think that sort of formula can work with almost any fear that you have. So one more example or one more way to look at it is um, these actions that you're taking are confidence training. People might tell you if you're afraid, you just got to have confidence, you just have to believe in yourself, and I think that's backwards. I think confidence comes afterwards, not beforehand. And the example I'm going to use is actually from my first book that I wrote, a young adult romance about a Navy recruit, and he was going through confidence training, which is where they bring in all the recruits into a room, and they all put on gas masks, and then the uh, drill sergeant lets loose a, a gas bomb, a tear gas bomb, and the recruits, one at a time, have to take off their gas masks and breathe in this gas and count to 20 or say the alphabet and then do whatever they have to do until the drill instructor lets them go. And, of course, by the end, they are choking, they're 
crying, they're, you know, throwing up. It's horrible. It's they have this terrible physical reaction to the gas. And eventually they make it through and they get out. And what it does is it gives them the confidence that they can actually survive. And so when they're in a battle situation, they have already experienced this uh, feeling of being sick, of breathing in gas, and having this horrible physical reaction, and yet they still survived. And so that effort, experience, and accomplishment, those are the three steps that actually give you the confidence you need to move forward. So if you put in the effort, you take the action in the face of whatever your fear is, you experience whatever is the thing that you're afraid of, whether it's writing the book or publishing the book or marketing the book. And in the end, you have the accomplishment of having done it, having survived it, and perhaps learned something out of it. And that gives you the confidence to move forward again. So it's kind of a recursive thing. Um, it kind of feeds on itself. The actions follow one after another, but they really are a recipe in how to be brave um, as fears come along because fears are not a one-time thing. I can guarantee you that whatever you're afraid of today will either come back to visit you later or it will morph into another form and no matter where you are along the journey you're always going to be facing fears of one kind or another. So let's go back to Brene Brown and her idea that vulnerability is courage. Um, one of the things that was most compelling to me out of her talk was that those people who took those risks, took the risk of being vulnerable, going out into the world and, and opening themselves up, those were, in her study, the people who were the most connected and had the strongest sense of worthiness and belonging. So the thing that they risked they risked losing that connection with other people. They were risking that people would judge them or that they would lose their respect. And in the end, what they had was the most connection and the strongest sense of worth. And it's, so it's kind of ironic to me that moving forward, being brave, taking, letting yourself be vulnerable and recognizing that that vulnerability is actually courage, is what can actually lead to the strongest rewards. Um, and I love this quote that she has. The courage to be imperfect, to tell the story of who you are with your whole heart. And I really want that for all of my writer friends. I want you to have the courage to be imperfect. I want you to tell the story of who you are with your whole heart. And I want you to take the risks that are an inherent part of doing that. Whether it's with your craft, with your publishing, with your marketing, whatever it is, I want you to go there. And I want you to do it because I think it's really going to bring you the most fulfillment in your writing life and in your life in general. Thank you for listening to this webinar about facing your fears. I hope that it's helped you in some way. You can find my blog at susankquinn.com, um, there's lots of information there about all of my books, and I continue to blog as I go through this amazing indie journey, and I hope you will follow along with me. Thank you very much.